begin data analysis of your EMG file, turn to the data analysis section of the EMG lab procedures provided in lab. A PDF of these instructions can also be found in Canvas a &P one Lab Resources beside the link to this video. The first step in the instructions is to get a computer with a free BSL application. This is the same software that was downloaded as part of the pre-lab. If you are unable to download the latest version of the BSL application onto your own computer, the computers in the lab cart, as well as the desktops in the upstairs South Hall computer lab, all have the application already installed. To open a saved Biopack file, you must first place your EMG file on the computer you are working on. If your EMG file was emailed to you, open your email and download the EMG file you will be analyzing. Do not try to open the attachment directly from your email, however. Biopack files can only be opened through the BSL application. If your EMG file is on a USB drive, plug it into the computer. Following the data analysis instructions in the EMG lab procedures, now open the BSL application. Select Analyze Your Own Data at the top of the window that opens and open a lesson data file for analysis at the bottom, and then click OK. In the next window that opens, select the location where the file was saved to or downloaded. If saved to a flash drive, locate the flash drive on the left side column and select the lesson file. If using an MC computer, the flash drive will appear as the D drive. If you downloaded your file from your email, select the Downloads folder on the left side column and then select your file. If you get to this point and see your file but are unable to select it, this is generally due to a change in file extension done by the server. Follow the steps detailed in the instructions to correct this issue and then open your file. Either way, the EMG lab file will then open with all the EMG lab experiments recorded in full view. Follow the step-by-step -step data analysis instructions. The first few steps will get you familiar with the layout and tools of the application, while the remaining pages walk you through how to complete tables 2.1 and 2.2 in the post lab. You will notice several black vertical lines running down the length of the integrated EMG and clench first data. These act as dividers marking the beginning of a new experiment recorded. If you click on the diamond or event marker at the top of the line, it will turn red and the top text box will change to indicate the name of that segment's recording. In this case, we have selected the dominant arm continued clinch at maximum force condition. If you then click on the next event marker, you will change the condition labeled in the top text box. Rather than click on these individual event markers, however, you may also move along these conditions using the left and right event arrows on the far right of the screen. If we click on the left event arrow, for example, and move our selection all the way back to the left of the screen, we will return to the dominant arm increasing clinch force condition recorded, which is where we want to begin. You may notice that some of the waveforms from the integrated EMG and or clinch force recordings are cut off from view. Select display on the top menu bar and then auto scale waveforms from the menu list. This will bring all waveforms into clear view. Move down to the bottom half of the screen to the journal section making sure that Journal is selected. Scroll down till Table 2.1 is in full view. For this table, you will measure the force at peak in kilograms and the integrated EMG in millivolts for both the dominant and the non-dominant arm. The first column of Table 2.1 asks you to enter the assigned force increment. To do so, look to the far right of the clench force recording strip, where the kilogram values of each horizontal line is indicated. If the value of each horizontal grid line is not shown or skipped, click the plus button on the top of the screen to enlarge the EMG recording strips. This will allow you to see what every horizontal grid line is worth in kilograms. In this example, each horizontal grid line represents five kilograms of power. Keep in mind that this will vary between subjects. Now, in order to know how many rows to complete in Table 2.1, you will need to see how many clinch forces were completed for both the dominant and non-dominant arm. In this example, the subject completed five clenches, with the last clench force not hitting the grid line they were aiming for, thus reaching their maximum force. Be sure not to enter clench force data for repeated results, such as if the subject clenches two or more times at the same force. In this example, we will enter data for five rows at five kilogram increments, starting at five kilograms and ending at 25 kilograms. To enter kilogram and millivolt values for the dominant and then non-dominant arm, select the magnify tool on the far right of the screen 
and bring the magnifying glass cursor over the dominant arm increasing clench force recording segment. From the far top left corner of the recording, hold down the left click of your mouse and drag a box over the entire segment. Be sure not to release the left click too soon, cutting off any of the clench forces as shown. If this occurs, select display from the top menu and then zoom back. So once again, bring your magnifying glass cursor to the top left corner of the recording and drag a box over the entire segment, being sure not to cut off any waveforms from view. The portion that was highlighted will now be zoomed into. Now select the iBeam tool just beside the magnify tool and bring your iBeam cursor to the first clench force recorded that maintained the force to the first horizontal grid line. Be sure not to highlight any of the ascending or descending portion of the slope. Hold down the left click and from the first visible plateau, drag your cursor to the right until just before the descending slope. Now with the first clench force highlighted, bring your cursor down to the first row of table 2.1 under force at peak for dominant arm. Right click and select insert single measurement value from the menu list. In the BSL window that appears, you must select the appropriate measurement value to insert. This is shown at the top of each column of table 2.1 and will vary. For force at peak column, you are always selecting channel 41 mean from the menu. Now with the same portion highlighted, right click in row one under integrated EMG for the dominant arm. Select insert single measurement value. And in the window that opens, always select channel 40 mean for integrated EMG. We now have the average force produced when the subject was aiming for 5 kilograms of power, represented here under force at peak in kilograms and under integrated EMG in millivolts. Now complete the remainder of the dominant arm increasing clench force recording, following the same steps. Once the dominant arm measurements have been entered, select the right event arrow on the far right of the screen until you see the non-dominant arm increasing clench force condition title in the top text box. Use the horizontal scroll bar in the middle of the screen to bring the beginning portion of the recording into full view. Select display from the top menu bar and auto scale waveforms to ensure you have the best view of the waveforms possible. Make sure that the I-beam tool is selected and once again highlight the first clench force that maintained its force to the first horizontal grid line and complete the remainder of table 2.1 following the same steps used for the dominant arm half.
When Table 2.1 is complete, scroll down in the Journal section until Table 2.2 is in full view. For Table 2.2, you will be measuring the maximum clench force, calculating 50% of its value, and then measuring the time to fatigue. Click the left event arrow on the far right of the screen until the dominant arm continued clench at maximum force is listed in the top text box. Use the horizontal scroll in the middle of the screen to bring the beginning portion of the recording into view. Make sure that the iBeam tool is still selected and bring your cursor over to the beginning portion of the recording, just before the highest peak in the blue clench force recording, as shown. Click once over the recording so that a blinking line appears over both the integrated EMG and clench force recording strips. Where this line is currently blinking, the force being produced is shown beside the channel 41 value box at the top of the screen. In this example, we see that the subject was producing 21.571568 kilograms of power. If we move the right arrow key on our keyboard, we will notice that the blinking line will move to the right and the value in the channel 41 value box at the top of the screen will increase as the line approaches the highest force produced. Using the arrow keys on your keyboard, go back and forth over this beginning segment until you are sure you have found the highest force produced. Once found, enter this value by right-clicking under the maximum clench force column in table 2.2 for the dominant arm. Select insert single measurement value from the menu list. In the BSL window that appears, select channel 41 value as is indicated at the top of the column. The value that was at the top of the screen will now be rounded and entered into the table. We must now calculate 50% of this maximum clench force by either multiplying this value by 50% or dividing it by 2. Type this value into the second column of Table 2.2. We now have the starting and stopping point that we must highlight in order to accurately measure the time to fatigue. To do so, bring your I-beam cursor over the blinking line and hold down the left click dragging the cursor to the right as shown. As soon as the value in the channel 41 value box at the top of the screen goes below the 50% maximum clench force, we will release the left click. To enter this value, right-click under the Time to Fatigue column for the dominant arm. Select Insert Single Measurement Value and Channel 40 Delta T, as is indicated at the top of the column. This will showcase the time it took the dominant arm to fatigue in seconds. In order to record data for the non-dominant arm, select the right event arrow at the far right of the screen until non-dominant arm continued clench at maximum force is listed in the top text box. Once again, use the horizontal scroll bar to bring the beginning of the recording into view. Follow the same steps as was followed for the dominant arm to complete the non-dominant arm half of Table 2.2. Once Table 2.2 is complete, you can transfer all remaining values by hand to the EMG PostLab data tables in your Must Know book. You can then complete the EMG PostLab questions that are in your Must Know lab manual. 
Do not answer the questions at the bottom of the journal section in the application, as these questions have since been modified, and the most recent updates are in your MUST notebook. When you are ready to save your data, first zoom back by selecting Display and Zoom Back until you are back at the full recording view. Then select File from the top menu and Save As from the menu list. In the window that opens, select a location to save your file to. Ideally, you would select the same location from which you open the file, such as the Downloads folder or your USB drive. If you select the same location, a window asking if you would like to overwrite the existing file will open. Select Replace. If this window does not appear, then you did not select the same location and will have two separate files as a result, one with the data tables complete and one without. To then exit out of the application, select BSL Analysis and then Quit to close out the program.